If a con artist, serial killer, targeting Instagram models set her sights on you, what would you do? Some killers have refined tastes. They're not satisfied by the kill itself, but by the sweet, succulent hunt for the most trusting, naive, oblivious prey they can find. They can hide in plain sight and come with a starting skill tree that rivals the technology in spy movies. Madison came to Thailand to shoot Instagram ads and get over her dead-end relationship. She's so sheltered and her life is so manicured, she doesn't even notice as the walls begin to close around her and a scammer threatens to take everything she has. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the con artist killer in Influencer. Madison has it all. The adoring, faceless fan base, the disposable income to jet set around the world, and, of course, the deep existential boredom of someone who's never struggled a day in their entire life. She's week deep into a Thailand vacation she planned with her overbearing boyfriend, Ryan, who flaked at the last minute. Who cares that you're in one of the most interesting and adventurous countries in the world when you can mope by the pool all day, hawking skincare products no one can afford, and probably shouldn't buy anyway. My cup of sympathy runneth over. This looks like an introvert's wet dream, at least until an older resort guest who seems completely oblivious to the f off vibes she's throwing his way hits on her. Another guest, CW, intervenes and befriends her. She wins Madison over by sharing intimate details about her life and humbly implying she's been the victim of a spiked drink in that past and didn't want that to happen to Madison. How kind. The next day, the pair scoot her off together to experience a tourist idea of the real Thailand. Sunrise vistas, elephant petting, and street food. I mean, looks great. They drink, they flirt, and by the end of the night, they're hugging like old gal pals. At least until Madison finds her resort door standing wide open. The apartment is trashed, and her passport is gone. This is why we take photocopies of our passports on international trips. And we don't walk into ransacked apartments without calling the police and resort staff in that order. A police report is filed, but the paperwork is in time, and CW has to interpret the information Madison's supposed to fill in. They tell Madison she'll have to drive to Bangkok and wait two weeks for a temporary visa. When she tells her boyfriend Ryan what happened, he blames her for the incident and she dumps him. CW suggests Madison crash with her for the two weeks. She plies Madison with more adventures, more spots off the beaten path, letting her continue filming as she goes. The problem, of course, is that all of her posts are shiny snapshots of bull artificial happiness, vague locations, and CW easily avoids the spotlight, saying she doesn't like being on camera, which means Madison's viewers don't even know she's there. They arrive at CW's jungle abode, where Madison finds a book with another girl's name written inside. The next day, CW says she has a surprise and sails Madison out into the ocean, out of sight of land, to a picturesque island where she plies Madison with booze. Madison is too trusting too comfortable. She jokes that this is the sort of spot where CW could kill her and no one would ever know. No, I'm not gonna kill you, but I am going to leave you here. CW tells her she'll wake up alone and realize CW is gone. Her phone has no service, so she won't be able to call for help. She'll search for food, but probably won't find any. And there's no easy source of water on the island, so her body will slowly succumb to dehydration, which she claims is almost euphoric. Then, crabs will eat Madison's body, and not a single one of her million followers will ever come looking for her, because no one really cares about her. Madison thinks she's joking. The next Next morning, CW does exactly what she said she'd do. She takes Madison's bags and dips. Now, I bet you're thinking, we're going to stay with Madison, help her survive on Gilligan's Island, and escape her death sentence. You would be wrong. This isn't Madison's story. This is CW's. As such, targeting saps in the cold hard world of influencers gets a bit more interesting. We're not rooting for the clueless tourists getting taken advantage of. We are rooting for the parasites eating their lives lives from the inside out. So we're gonna approach this thing from both sides, on behalf of the parasites and their hosts. Over the next few weeks, CW disappears into Madison's life like an octopus among the rocks. 
she continues posting to Madison's social media accounts, wearing her clothes and a wig, then photoshopping Madison's face onto her own. She manipulates Madison's self-indulgent voice recordings to continue talking to fans and increase the spending limit on Madison's credit card. Then she moves into the mansion Madison was renting and posts a farewell tweet from Madison, telling everyone that she'll be taking a break from social media for a while. Man, why hasn't Ethan Hunt recruited her yet? Maybe because this kind of sadistic boredom can never really be satisfied. Slowly weaning people off Madison's socials is a solid way to cover our tracks and walk away a bit richer. But this only works because CW is a whiz at Photoshop and can hide the physical identifier on her face. It's also risky because if you pick the wrong person with a protective family or curious best friend, you are one find my friend app away from getting caught and sent to Thai prison where cockroaches nest into your ears and the grime gives you the sh until you die. This is why phone and internet scams only last until the money transfer is complete. The longer you linger, the bigger the bullseye you paint on your own back. Once she had Madison's money, CW should have destroyed her phone, wiped all evidence of herself from Madison's life, and disappeared into anonymity. A few dollars richer with one more notch on her belt. Her problem is, it's not about the money. It's about pulling one over on these self-absorbed models who actually believe the hype about themselves, and it's that mindset that's going to catch up with her. It doesn't take long for CW to get bored enough to search for her next target. She zeroes in on another blonde American influencer and begins stalking her through the streets of Bangkok, but when she tries to initiate contact, the blonde, Jessica, blows her off. CW tries again. She studies Jessica's social media profile and discovers she runs a solo female travel company. Her girls travel extensively using her her system. CW trades her chill local vibe for that of a super fan who wants to be on Jessica's team. She tells Jessica that she's been following her profiles and came to Thailand to follow her literally. Because Jessica is a narcissist, this isn't creepy. It's flattering. And Jessica's doubly intrigued when CW mentions that she owns a massive mansion on the Thai coast. CW waits for her moment and swipes Jessica's room key from her bag. She's so comfortable with her own routine, she doesn't even wear a disguise as she slips into Jessica's room to tear it apart. I'm gonna give CW the benefit of the doubt that she checked for cameras first. After, CW sits out front of the hotel, just waiting for Jessica to seek her out as a shoulder to cry on. It's all going according to plan. Until she spirits Jessica down the coast to the mansion. It's not her house, but the mansion Madison was renting. The doors open when she arrives. Flower petals and lit candles lead downstairs where a weird bowl of what looks like moldy fruit is sitting on the table. A figure enters. It's Ryan, Madison's boyfriend. Turns out the credit card CW increased the credit limit on was Madison's corporate account, which Ryan has access to. When he saw the charges on the card, he assumed he would find Madison here when he arrived. Instead of leaving immediately and disappearing into the crowd, CW doubles down, too committed to back out now. She's quick on her feet. She tells Ryan that Madison Madison let her crash here while telling Jessica the reverse, and both believe her. And in the morning, she uses the voice manipulation software on her computer to call Ryan as Madison and break up with him again. But he calls her bluff and tells Madison that she can break up with him in person if she really means it. Now, CW stuck with an annoying third wheel who very quickly unravels the delicate friendship she's developed with Jessica. He says Madison would have never let a stranger like CW stay with her. And reveals that Madison's room was broken into right before she went radio silent. Jessica makes the connection. When they visit a bar, she bounces, sending a message to Madison's account saying she wants to talk about CW. Well, it was fun, CW. Just chalk this one up as a loss on the books and move on to the next clueless Glamazon. <sighs> But she won't do that. You gotta know when to call it quits, take the L and move on. She follows Jessica back to the house and pays off the taxi driver waiting for Jessica to grab her things. Then she confronts her. CW tries to act clueless and innocent, but Ryan muddled the waters too much to repair the relationship. You're creepy. 
Jessica tries to crawl away toward the pool, but in the weaker position. Disoriented, head pounding, and eyes blurry with blood, she's easy to finish off. CW presses the sharp heel of her shoe into Jessica's throat and crushes it. <laughs> Let's split strategy here. Pretending to admit defeat and leaving now means the difference between continuing our shtick as a twisted sort of predator of shallow Instagram models or having to clean up mess after mess until we're finally caught. We should leave before Jessica for a couple of reasons. First, it'll make Jessica far less likely to report us to the police or mention us to other people. She'd probably dismiss us as just a weirdo clinger and get on with her trip, giving us the extra a couple of days we'd need to wait for a great moment to kill her without drawing attention to ourselves. Second, we should leave because Ryan isn't home yet, which means he'll also write us off as some weirdo when he doesn't see us again. Basically, if we're creepy, we'd want to seem creepy and harmless to remain under the radar and continue the fun. As for Jessica, once you suspect that you're being targeted by a scam or worse, you need to assume you're in danger until you're out of there. This isn't an internet that scam where the predator is 10,000 miles away. CW is right there, watching your every move. You don't know what she's done before or how far she'll go to get what she wants. In Thailand, scams are common enough that the government has a dedicated toll-free number to call, 1155. Most cities and larger towns also have a tourist police. Not that either will do her much good retrieving her luggage. If it were me, though, there's two ways I might have done things. Both are risky. The first option is to just not draw attention from CW at all. Go back to the mansion with her, agree to plans for tomorrow, then wait until CW goes to sleep and slip out with our stuff. The second option would be to leave the bar and go directly to a hostel with other Americans to spend the night. In the morning, we could return to the mansion and wait for CW to leave before going in and grabbing our stuff. What we are not going to do in either case is threaten her or call her creepy. Strangers are unpredictable and sometimes deadly. CW packs Jessica's body in a suitcase and scrubs some of the blood away before Ryan comes home with partiers from the bar. She gets him to back off for a moment, but her murder bone still going. She grabs a knife and heads up the stairs to finish him off. Relax, scary spice. Did you forget you're a f Mission Impossible Super Spy? The only way your fun train keeps rolling is if you strategize with your head and not the dark rage fueled by pretty people having too much fun around you. A phone rings with an Instagram update. She sees Ryan has uploaded an image of Jessica to his account with her very visible in the background. CW gets a hold of herself and decides to use her super skills properly. In the morning, she apologizes to Ryan and watches as he opens his Instagram feed to see a new update from Matt account with her hugging some guy claiming he's the love of her life. Excellent. Now do a couple more. Lead him on a wild goose chase right around your little shipwreck island where he could disappear forever and you can move on. Instead, she gets him plastered, deletes the photo from his phone, and stages his room to make it look like they slept together. Why exactly? Maybe that last part was just for fun because if he's already plastered, it's pretty easy to steal his phone and remove the photo. Maybe it's to make things awkward enough that he leaves. But the next morning, we find out he was leaving anyway. Now, you've made yourself super memorable to him and given him a reason to feel guilty about not talking to Madison before he leaves. Ryan pretends to leave for the States, but instead follows the photoshopped picture of Madison to the resort. There, he meets the creep from the bar and shows him the picture. The guy points out that it couldn't have been taken within the last few days. It's Thailand's rainy season. There hasn't been a cloudless day in weeks. Piece by piece, Ryan starts to figure out that something is very wrong. Madison never told her best friend about this new love of her life, and he notices the obvious manipulation on one of Madison's videos. <laughs> Ryan returns to the mansion on the coast to find it's been clean, save for a random backpack laid out in plain view, containing the souvenir Jessica bought and Madison's diary, which is just stupid. A level of stupid CW is not. This scene is horse is what I'm saying. Anyway, he hears CW's footsteps and really goes for it. <laughs> 
CW wakes up tied to a chair. Ryan interrogates her about where to find Madison and threatens to call the cops. CW doesn't fold easily. She reveals she's planted messages throughout Madison's account suggesting Ryan hit her. And now, he has a woman tied to a chair with an open head wound. He'll look like a psychopath. You know what, CW? When you're right, you're right. I guess we'll just have to drag you into a room we can soundproof and lock securely and go a little medieval on you, since there's no reason to let you go now. He pulls a knife and asks again. What did you do with my girlfriend? I didn't do anything. Ryan, don't fall for it, dude. At best, Madison is still alive, stashed somewhere. At worst, CW killed her, which you definitely should suspect is the case. So instead, what you're going to do is knock her out again and take her to a more secure room, where you can tie her arms behind her back using a double fisherman's knot or constrictor knot, which are both extremely difficult to untie. Find her ankles, then remove anything from the room she can use as a weapon, even table lamps. Remember, you start to feel the effects of dehydration after only three days. To speed things along, add a teaspoon of salt to the water you do give her. Let's see if she's hit with that euphoria she promised Madison she would feel. Eventually, she'll tell you where Madison is at, and you can go check, returning to exact revenge if she's lying. Instead, he follows her like an idiot down to the dock with the boat. And also, like an idiot, she actually takes him to the boat. CW attacks, diving into the water after, and using her own restraints to hold him under until he drowns. He swings wildly and randomly with the knife, instead of feeling for the rope against his throat and cutting it to save his own life, or reaching around his back and stabbing her, or slicing the femoral artery on the leg CW has wrapped around him. You were doing so well, buddy. I'm just kidding. Both of you are stupid and took stupid, unnecessary risks. CW goes home and posts to Madison's feed that Ryan was physically and emotionally abusive, neutering the likelihood that anyone will come looking for him. Then, she ferries Ryan's body to the island of lost toys. But something looks different when she gets there. See? Madison didn't need her help anyway. CW races for the boat and grabs a shovel. Don't do it, CW. Get back on the boat and leave. Now. Eventually, she'll die. And Thailand has 1,400 other uninhabited islands you can use in the meantime. CW plunges into the forest to finish Madison off once and for all. Sure, just leave your only means of escape wide open for anyone watching you to steal. Dumb. CW scours the island and reaches a high vista just in time for Madison to sneak up from behind and end her whole career with one swing. <laughs> She wakes up in time to watch Madison speed away into the distance, leaving her behind. At least she has a sense of humor about it. The secret to life is knowing when to bet and when to fold. CW would still be stealing and stranding the shallow if she had just cut her losses and moved on to a new target when Ryan showed up. But predators like her have to keep escalating things to keep them fresh and interesting, which means it was only a matter of time before she marked the wrong target anyway. Once you know you're being scammed, escaping comes down to assuming the danger is very real and acting accordingly. Disguise your suspicion and leave before they know you know. Seek out groups, call the consulate if you need to, and tell someone back home that you feel like you're in danger and who is making you feel that way. Then add them to your Find My Friend app so they could trace your phone if they don't hear from you. As for Ryan, he'd still be alive if he hadn't underestimated CW, or if he'd swung that knife with literally any coordination underwater. Oh, and don't try trust strangers. Come on, we learned that in kindergarten. For those reasons, I think Influencer was beaten. Moral of the story, tie up loose ends.